I, I call it the kind of the golden rule of reciprocity. If they want to send kids here, fine, but we get to send kids there. Same number. If they want to invest in our New York Stock Exchange or other exchanges, we get to be involved in their finances. If they want to be in our index funds, we get to be in their index funds. Right, so there should just be an absolute reciprocity across the board in terms of policy, and there's not. We've been trying to help them out. We, we were hopeful that their sons and daughters would become capitalist yuppies, and they haven't. Their party runs their government, their party runs their military, and the Americans don't know that, that the party runs everything. And it's you know 10, 10 to 50 people that are just iron-fisted rulers of China. Dave Pratt, yep. great to have you on American Thought Leaders. Thank you, Jan, great to be here. So, you know, former Virginia congressman, now yep. you're the dean of uh, business school yep. at Liberty. Right, That's, uh, you know, so of course we're gonna have to talk about business. Good, good. Right, I, I actually, you know, one of my, I, I remember an article by Amel, who's our uh, uh, White House correspondent, also our, you know, one of our yep. economics correspond yep. correspondents, did a, did a piece with you about small business. Yeah. It's a big thing for you. Yeah. No, uh, it, it, it's a big thing. The, uh, I'll kind of morph back and forth between politics and small business. Uh, but the small business person across the whole U.S. has kind of gone over to the populist side with Trump because they know they don't have access to lobbyists up here in the swamp. And so they've all concluded uh, that, you know, President Trump is, is the leader to break up the swamp. And now you've got the same thing going on with Bernie on the left. And I, the media hasn't really identified that yet. It's two populist revolutions going on, both. I met Bernie four years ago at the White House and said, hey, you know, you fighting against stuff like I am? You know, everything's bought and paid for up here. And he goes, yeah, Dave, what the hell you think's going on up here? Yeah, that's, what, you know, that's what's going on up here. And we just have radically different solutions, right? So he's got a socialist, you know, 90 trillion solution. And we want, you know, private property rights and the rule of law and markets at work and, you know, following the best Nobel laureates in, in economics and what they would say to do. And so uh, small business is just paralyzed. And then, you know, they go and try to compete in our entrepreneurship center at uh, Liberty with the students, kind of similar. They put a product up on Amazon and it's just a matter of whether it gets stolen or not, right? And then replicated right. for cheaper with a cheaper labor right. source. And so you can either have an international uh, set of norms for the U.S. and the West, or you can follow the Chinese communist norms that they're dictating now with their social media scores, uh, not only on their own people, but on our businesses. They're keeping social credit scores on U.S. businesses. And if you don't behave, you don't get the supply chain with them. Right, we saw that with the NBA. What, what, right. could, what could happen? Yeah, that was amazing. It right? was. A, it was right. well. I thought that was really interesting because yeah. it was yeah. kind of a rude awakening. Yes. We were like, "Oh, this happens." Right. See, look, right. We, we know about this because you know those. We were founded by Chinese Americans back yes. in the day, yes. specifically to expose what the Chinese Communist Party was doing. Right. So you know they didn't like us very much. And we had a low social credit no, score. No, no, you, you've been hero heroic. Yeah. And that, that yeah. example was perfect because it showed. I think it was Charles Barkley that came in on the freedom side, and so anyone with a vested economic interest, you know, and I won't name names because I like them too, but famous players, <laughs> and they uh, anyone that had a Nike, you know, brand or two, they couldn't say anything or wouldn't say anything. Right. And Amer these are major Americans with hundreds of millions of dollars already in the bank, and they won't speak up on behalf of people who are suffering, which to me is just an atrocity. And then Barkley comes at Charles Barkley, who I love. He's big, retired, and a little more senior to some of these young guys. And he knows what matters in life because he's more mature, and he speaks up for the, the lowest of the low in the world. And the average American has no idea what's happening to the, you know, the Uyghurs in Western China and the... Uh, the abuses, and, uh, and then when China's going around on their Belt and Road to Sub-Saharan African countries, I've talked to some of their leaders uh, in some of the Sub-Saharan African countries, and they, they say, you have no idea what China uh, does to a country. It, it, come right. meet with me a little bit, and I'll tell you. And so uh, I'm glad what uh, the Epic Times is doing on that front. Right. No, I mean, so this we, we, we this is part of what we're doing, right? It's super. This is a lot of people have written to us, actually, our, our, our readers, our subscribers, yep. saying, oh, my goodness, I didn't know about this thing, a situation yeah. in China. My goodness, this is serious, serious. Right. So it's happening. You know, yeah. I think there is this kind of greater awareness yeah. of these realities right. in America that, that I certainly didn't see 10 years ago. No, that's right. You know, And analytically, 
our people know better, right? So I make fun of Harvard, you know, MBAs. Mm -hmm. These are the smartest people in the world, right? They're off the charts. And the, the first thing you learn in Finance 101 is, you know, diversify, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, what yeah. have they all done in search of the short run dollar? They're vested like crazy. Yeah. And so I was on a show the other day, so what's the solution? What should Trump do? And I, I, I call it the kind of the golden rule of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. If they want to send kids here, fine. But we get to send kids there. Same number. If they want to invest in our New York Stock Exchange or other exchanges, we get to be involved in their finances. If they want to be in our index funds, we get to be in their index funds. Right? So there should just be an absolute reciprocity across the board in terms of policy, and there's not. We've been trying to help them out. We, we were hopeful that their sons and daughters would become capitalist yuppies, and they haven't. Their party runs their government. Their party runs their military. And the Americans don't know that, that the party runs everything. And it's you know 10, 10 to 50 people that are just iron-fisted rulers of China. Absolutely. So that, you know, you, you, it's interesting. This, is this, how much does this kind of reality, the economic realities of how the world changed over the last 30 years, yes. Vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, you know, China being kind of the main player, how much does right. that figure into the curriculum that exists at Liberty? Well, for the past year, I've been on our entire faculty, and uh, we're bringing in speakers, and, you know, we have, you know, like Tom Cotton has been at the forefront in the Senate on some of these issues, yep. and I'm following some of the thought leaders, including yourself, on this, uh, but we're... We're shifting as much, and part of it is just getting the students at the ripe age of 20 to want to read the newspapers, right? Right. So there's a lot of competing things when you're 20 years old. We're actually trying to work on that here yes, a little yes, bit, you know? Good, yeah, good, good. Yeah, let's see but if that's the challenge, out. right? So yeah. it's more, it's uh, intellectually, they get it. And our kids are, you know, free market. And, and it, 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 everybody gets the U.S. context, right? You had to first have the rule of law to have freedom. That we, we fought against the, you know, Britain, whatever, and, and it, it's kind of ironic that you need the rule of law and property rights to ensure your freedoms. And so we get that domestically, but internationally we don't get it. So if you don't have international norms, and we, we had them after we set them up, right, Bretton Woods, uh, the Bretton Woods Order, the World yep. Bank, IMF, United Nations, all this, you know, we, we funded that and set it up, and China was outside of that. And that world order prospered and lifted all boats for 50 years and peace and capitalism was flourishing. Uh, but now there's a new 800 pound gorilla called China that doesn't follow that established order. They're trying to set up their own. Right. And, and I thought they were kind of contained to their own hemisphere. I always had that view for the past 20, and that's changed. I read Deceiving yeah. the Sky by Bill Gertz. Right. And what, no, excellent yeah. book, excellent and they, book. They, they, China has documents, China 2025, China 2050. And they, yeah. they self-assert, we're at war. We're at economic war, cyber war, uh, and that's what's coming your way. Yeah. No, I know, and it, it's been, I've, had, I've had Bill on the show right. to, talk right. about, to talk about the book, of course. Yeah. But, I mean, this is something that's just been happening yeah. for a, quite a long time. It's yes. part of the strategy. Right. Right? Right. Just tell the Americans what they want to hear. Yes. And we'll, we'll just do our own thing. Thank you very right. much. Right. Right. And I, yeah. I heard an anecdote. I'm not, I, I think it was a two or three star general a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And in 100 years, China has their celebration, their 100 year celebration, right? So yes. 2049. Yeah. Well, at that celebration, they want to celebrate also that they possess Taiwan. Well, they, it, I think it's even bigger. I think it's yeah. an even grander vision yeah. than that. Yeah. It's just that they kind of are the dominant. Right. They, they, they're the, it's, it's the, it's the China, but it's not the China. It's the Chinese Communist Party yeah, that, right. world order. Yes. That's China and China Communist right. Party, very different right. things. Right. Right. And yeah. then this general pointed out, so they're going to, they want to, you know, celebrate their their, their win, their victory, that will include owning Taiwan. And he said, you do the math on that. He said, they've also calculated that Americans lose their memory after 15 years because of Tiananmen. So 15 years, so you do the math on that, 2050, take away 15, they have to have Taiwan by 2035. And if that doesn't wake you up in the middle of the night, you're not paying attention. And so uh, we, we've got some aggression coming our way. They copied all of our destroyers and carrier groups and technologies and airplanes. It's all been well documented. But the American people aren't aware of it yet. 
So how is Liberty University helping in this? Tell me, or, 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 yeah. or how will it help? I'm gonna, I'm well, gonna put you yeah. on the spot here. No, that's no spot. Yeah. That's what yeah. we do. We got the Falkirk yeah. Center. We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're standing up this year. Uh, President Jerry Falwell with Charlie Kirk. And Charlie Kirk's just fantastic across uh, American universities on establishing the right of free speech. That the fact that this has to be established <laughs> at centers of the liberal learning, the, the liberal arts, uh, is astounding in itself. So we're working on that project, uh, but it's kind of uh, faith and freedom. And those are the first principles that made this country great. And uh, those are the principles we have to stand up in China on behalf of the Chinese people who we all love. Uh, the Chinese people are being repressed. And so we go back to our founders and our first principles. You know, you got the First Amendment with freedom of speech and association of religion and the press and all that. And then two, you got uh, guns. And I mean, you can't, you can't really make it up, right? Venezuela, you go around to the, any socialist experiment, they, they, they all, you know, following Marx, you know, well, just trust us in the short run. You know, this will take 20 or 30 years. Give us all your power, give us all your liberties, give us all your guns, uh, and then we're gonna establish nirvana for you. And then, you know, at some point in the future, the worker will be better off. Well, that, that promise has never come true. And so now the Marxists have gotten more clever, right, in their they have theorists. And so instead of capitalist versus labor, now they have oppressed versus oppressor. And so if you're in, if you, you know, and so they've propped this up. That's the wars in the Democrat Party right now, right? But race and gender and sex and all the, any group that can break you into. And so we're, we're in a cultural war. Uh, and, and America has always been a nation under under law. Every individual is protected by the law. It doesn't matter what group you're in. Right? If you're in a minority group, you should be absolutely protected. And as soon as you start breaking off into that crazy Marxist logic, you're you're gone. And you're on a you're, you're on the road to Venezuela. And so that's what we're at Liberty. That's what we're working on: it, getting people back into the first principles, explaining why they matter. And uh, we got to retain them. And the next next generation has to fight for it. It's a fight. Rights language uh, you have to fight for. Well, a wonderful place to end. Uh, Dave Brat, such a pleasure right. to have you. Thank you, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it.